Hello everyone, my name is Yulia and today in this video we'll be working with time calculations in Kojic App Builder. So imagine the situation when in your application you have to calculate a duration of a work day for some employee or the another case is when you have to calculate the whole working period for him in your company. To do this, let's try to add a field in our applications. Here we have an empty page and here we can add a field of a type date and time for user to specify the start of his workday and also the same field for him to specify the date and time of the end of a workday. Also, we need some fields for him to specify the start and end of a work period, which will be only a date field. So this one will have a title start of work period. And the same date field for the end of a work period. Now we can save our app and let's have a look how does these fields look on our form. And now we are ready to open our application and see the outcome. Here we have an empty field for the employee to mention the date and time of the start and end of his work day and the date for a work period. Now what we wanted to do is we wanted to make some computation to calculate a duration and a period. To do this we can add some buttons on our field and let's give them a name. First one will be to calculate work day duration and the another button will be for calculating a work period. Now we are ready to add an action for these buttons to make a computation on this action. So we create it Give it a name also, calculate for day as well. And now we'll be redirected to the code block editor where we can create our function. As you can see, we have a built-in function which is called between and we have a two copies of this function. The first one is for duration type and the second one for a period data type. What is actually a difference between a duration and a period is that duration measures time using uh, time-based values like minutes, seconds or hours, while a period uses uh, date-based values like months and years. So in our case, to calculate a workday duration, we select the duration type function, but we don't have any field on our form to store and deploy a result of a calculation. Therefore, we are going back to our page editor and we add a special field of a type duration to store the work day duration. Oops. And the same we do for storing a period of a work of a user. So we called it a work period and we select the period system data type. Now we are ready to open the form and drag these fields on it. So here we'll have the place to store the result of the workday duration calculations and here for a work period. Now we are going back to our code block editor to finish building our function. Let's try to reload our page to all items and fields will be stored there and here we have a field to store the workday duration. So we set the value of this field equal to the result of a between function which will have as a parameters the start of a workday and the end of a workday. Now let's try to save this function and now we are ready to build our result and test if this calculation for duration will work properly. So now our application has been published and we open it and let's try to test a duration calculation. So we input some start, some end a bit later and let's try to check our button. And here we have that on the click on our button we have a duration of a workday calculate. 
We can now move back to our form and write the same action for calculating a period. So if we again create a new action, give it a name, calculate work period and move to the code block editor. Here we again will use a between function but for a period now. And again, we have a special field to store the result of a period calculation, which is called the work period. And we set the value of this field equal to the between function result and send a parameters for it like a start of a work day here and the same the end of a work period here. So we get these values and set them at the parameters. Now we are ready to save and publish our application again to see the outcome of our second function. And again, let's open our application to see the result. Let's input some start of a work period, also select some end and check if our button works. And here we are, we have a result which is 10 days and it is OK. So going back to our form, let's mention the another type of calculation. In our case, it will be, for example, if we have some local date and time and we want to add some time units. So let's try to add a new field to create some new calculations. So here we firstly select a created block called, let's call it local date and time. And what we want to do is to add some hours or some minutes to this value. To do this, we can create a new field to specify a, some time unit, but we have to create a special type as we don't have it as a system one, so we call it time unit. And there is no already existing, so we create it as a new one in our app. And the main field of this type will be a unit, which will be simply a string for user to input an hour or seconds or stuff like this. But we can create a set instances for him to select. So we create an example like seconds. Then we can add minutes. Then in the same way, we add hours. The same we do with days. Then we can select months and years. Now let's go back to our form and let's add this field on it for user to make an input of a time unit he wants to select. And also we need to specify how many units we want to add to our local date. So we create a new field, which will be simply a number and it will be the amount of units. We also need to add some button to perform a calculation on a click on this button. Oops. Let's give it a name, add to local date and time as we will perform an addition computation. And now we need to create an action for our button. So we give it a name, the same, add to date and time. And now we are redirected to the code block editor. Here, when we want to make a calculation, the first thing we need to do is to check if we really have some input for a time unit and the number and amount of this unit. To do this, we can use a logic function if block and also we should check if our fields are not equal to null value. So first of all, we check if the input field called the time unit is not equal to null and also we need to check if our number and amount of time units is not, is not zero as well. So we again compare it to the null 
and here we have the number or the amount of units and to combine these two blocks we use the end block so what we can do we can join them and then send this block to the if block and if these two values or some of them is equal to the null what we do we send an error message which will tell the user a message that he must fill in the unit type animal so let's try to save our function and build our application to see the outcome if we really will have an error message with no input made So now we can reload our page to see the new functionality and so let's try to input some initial value of dating time but let these two fields empty and clicking on the button we will see the resulting message which tells us we have an error and we need to fill a value for a calculation. Now in case if our fields are not empty we are ready to perform a calculation. So here in the time block we have a special function called plus where we can add different time units like seconds, minutes, hours and all we need. So to use this what we have to do we have to first of all check what value of a time unit we have in our field. So that is why we had to check if some of the seed instances for a time unit is equal to our input. So we fetch a value of a time unit, let's start with a seconds and store it in our application, give it a name, seconds and now we are ready to add an another block which will be the else block because if our units are not specified we show an error and else in the other case what we do, we are now making calculations. So now here in the else block what we do? We create again an if block for checking if our time unit time unit value is equal to our fetched second time unit value. And in case it is true, what we do, we get our resulting view which is called the which is called the result date and time and we set this field equal to the plus function but with a parameters of this addition operation which are the initial value and the seconds added with an amount also specified on our form so now we set our field equal to result of this function now let's try to check if this block works properly. We save our application and build it again. And now again we can reload our time calculation page and now we are ready to test our adding the seconds unit. So here we can add for example 10 seconds and we will check you will have the proper result. And here it is. We have a really 10 seconds added to the initial date and time. Now we are ready to create the other blocks for the other time units like hours, seconds, minutes and other. So we need to fetch all the other ones like time units for minutes and give it a name like minutes. And now we can simply create a new block which will be the else if because if it is equal to seconds, then we calculate adding seconds. Else, if it is equal to minutes, we will add the minutes case and we'll have a um, great amount for all time units, this if blocks, else if blocks. Now let's work only with a minute, so we can simply copy this checking block, but now we need to compare our value not to the seconds but to the minutes value and again we copy this block 
setting our result field, but here we make the adding the plus function with minutes specified. So let's just now save and build our app again. And while it is building, we can finish fetching all 10 units like hours. Give it a name, hours. Also now we can fetch further units like days for now. And we also had a message that our application was built, so we can now deploy it and go on with fetching units like months. And also give it a proper name. And the last one, fetched value for unit, will be the year's value. And yes, here we are. So now we will be adding the same else if blocks, but with changing these parameters for minutes, years, days, and other time units. Let's open our app now, or just reload an existing page opened, and check if minutes block is working. So again, we specify some initial date and time. Now we will check minutes. So let's try to add 10 minutes. So clicking on the button, as we can see, the minutes value is properly added. And now what we do, we just add a new else if block, and copy the checking block, specifying not seconds, but hours for now. And again, we set the resulting field with a hours unit in addition function. So what I have done, I just simply copied these else if blocks for hours, days, months, and years time units. And now, after our application was built, I will try to reload and test all the functionality for different time units. So again, we set some initial date and time. Now let's try to use it for some hours. So let's try to add five hours. And here we have five hours added. Also, we can add the months. Let's also try to add five of them, and here we have. And also we can add a year's time units. Let's try to add 10 of them. And here we have 10 years added. So actually, as we can see, everything is working now. And that will all for now. I hope that your experience with working with time calculations in Kojic App Builder will be better for now. So thanks for watching. Bye.